Hello everybody out there in Facebook land. Today's Tech Tuesday and we are going to talk about failure analysis. We get pistons that come through the door here on a regular basis that you know you guys send in and go what the heck happened? Why did my parts blow up? What's going on? How can I prevent this in the future? And there's some things that we traditionally look for when it comes to inspecting a piston to see how well your engine's running, what the tune-up looks like, everything that has been going on from our standpoint to make sure that we've made the part to the correct dimensions and then we get to see what it actually looks like in the running condition of the engine when you send it back in. So there's, a, there's a quite a few things we look for. Obviously when stuff comes in in a big pile like this, it makes it a lot more difficult to figure out what happened. Um, you look for the obvious. You think about did a, a, a lock jump out? Did a lock not get put in? The piston obviously might have seized up in the bore. So there's a couple things we do to start with when we kind of go over and inspect all the parts and pieces and everything that's going on here. As you can see, this is probably the cylinder that was across from this one when it uh, decided to uh, exit the engine as fast as possible. But there's some few things we want to look at. There's a lot of things that are traditionally problems that can cause these type of issues in your engine. But the first thing you want to do is you want to kind of refer to the spec sheet that comes with your piston. That's probably the easiest thing to start with by checking some critical dimensions of the part. So what we were going to do is you could obviously, you know, we, these would be, here's a piston on the spec sheet right here. This is the brand new part and here's a couple pieces that have come in for inspection to try to figure out what's causing the skirts to, to rash up on the parts and maybe lock some parts up in the bore. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through and look at a, a wide variety of all the pistons that are sent in and see what they measure like in comparison to what the data sheet says. So I mean, it's pretty simple. We just go off the gauge point. And what we're doing right now is we just want to make sure that the skirt dimension is what is listed on the turn diameter of our spec sheet. So this one is within a couple tenths of what this turn diameter is. Um, so it, it, it's coming right in. So there's nothing wrong with the part there. If you see a part that has a skirt that's collapsed two or three thousandths, that could actually weaken the part. It can push the, the, the piston, rock, cause it to rock more in the bore. You're going to see a lot of skirt wear. What can cause a skirt to collapse in your part? Well, if you hydraulic the motor, you have uh, too much fuel in it, you run it into detonation. Um, you know, a lot of times guys don't realize it, but if you have a nitrous motor and you purge the engine on the nitrous, it'll really hammer the skirts real hard at low engine speeds and can knock a skirt out of a motor. So there's a lot of things that can cause that to happen. But once we go through and we see, hey, all the parts that dimensionally they look okay, what can cause them to get all of this trash on the skirts or what can cause them to lock up in the cylinder bore? The next step we would go through is we would go through and we would actually inspect the rings. Probably 90% of the times that we get rings sent in or pistons that get sent in for inspection and we look at the rings, the rings are budding. And what happens when the rings butt is the rings have no more room to expand. And when they quit expanding, what happens is, is the rings actually jam themselves up against the cylinder wall and actually start wiping all the oil film off of the cylinder wall. So effectively you've turned your uh, fancy custom piston into a really expensive honing machine and it starts wiping all, wiping all the oil film off of the cylinder wall, starts machining the cast iron block and that's where you're going to see a lot of these marks that can happen in the skirt from having improper ring gap. Um, obviously if trash goes through the motor, if it's in a dirt application or an off-road or you get some stuff that gets sucked through the motor, it can cause the same thing, but mo more than likely it's from the actual rings. So what we do, you can do it um, at your shop real easy. If you have a spark plug inspector or you know, if you got something to inspect your, your best friend's uh, ear canal, you can go through and look at the end of the rings and it'll tell you if the rings are budding. So I'm going to come over here to the 10 power microscope. 
And what we do is, it's kind of, it's going to be hard to see on the Facebook Live, but what we're doing is we're looking at the ring gaps themselves. And what we're trying to do is determine are the rings running and contacting the bore or budding together. Um, it's real easy to tell under the tin power because you're going to see a shiny spot on the edge of the ring. And what that's going to do is tell you, hey, this thing needs to have a little bit more gap. Traditionally, um, you, let's say 10 years ago when everybody was running 16th rings or 564 rings or as they're referred to today as tractor rings, um, people were real concerned about ring gaps. They wanted to run really, really tight ring gaps because the ring material actually wore off. But nowadays with stainless rings, with steel top rings, all this stuff, the rings are pretty much indestructible and you, you don't need to run as much or as tight a clearance as you did in the past because the rings actually absorb a little bit more heat and expand at different rates. So it's real simple. We just come in here and we, we get to look at all these fun things on the edge of the ring. And we can tell, hey, is this thing budding? What's going on? And this one looks like it's pretty good. It might just be kissing at just the whisker. But it just gives you an idea of one area to look at. So we want to definitely inspect the top and the second ring. I don't know if I can put it in there. If you can see through the microscope. Um. Nope, we tried. So, um, the, a lot of times guys try to run the second ring at a tighter gap, but what you want to do is if you, say you gap your, what we would recommend, if you gapped your top ring at, we'll just say 20 thousandths, we want your second ring to be a minimum 10 to 15 thousandths bigger gap, so it gives it a little bit more accumulator area and helps relieve the pressure off the top ring. So once we look at the rings, we go, well, what's the next thing that can happen? This is a, a piston out of a sprint car, one of our sprint car pistons. But what we want to look at is the running condition or the tune-up of the engine. Um, it's something that most engine shops don't have, but it's probably the most valuable tool in inspecting your piston after it's been run for a season. That would be Rockwell testing the part. Um, a lot of times you can visually look at a piston and think, man, that thing looks great, but it could be super soft. And what's going to happen to a soft piston is it just you limit its life. Um, you, most of these pistons start off as they're forged between 76 and 78 Rockwell. And as they get more time on them, if they get a lot of abuse to them or the tune-up's wrong, they run really, really lean, it just starts to cook the part and you're going to see the Rockwell go down substantially. So we can take this over to the Rockwell tester here. And we're just going to take a couple, uh, just a quick look at what is going on here and see. We like to check the deck. Um, we like to check the spark plug side. And if there's a problem, we can also check different areas of the part to see what's happening. It's still testing, not done yet. So, this is the perfect example of what a piston looks like. You looked at, if you look, if you visually looked at this piston and thought, man, this thing's running and, you know, it's not too bad. It is an alcohol burning engine, but why the heck is it coming in at a 58 Rockwell when it supposedly only has one night on the parts? Well, one, it could have a really, really lean tune up and it's causing some problems here in the in in the actual part itself so i'm going to check the back side here So the back side of the part actually checks pretty good. I'm going to check the front side again. Sometimes if you get some carbon buildup on the front of the part, it'll actually give you a false reading. So let's just go through and check that again. We'll clean that up real fast and see if we can get uh, a little bit different reading. So 71 is definitely acceptable. 50s is really, really soft. And I like to tell everybody, if you get below 60, you ought to consider replacing your parts. So 
So that side of the piston is definitely uh, softer, so you're going to have to figure out why. We might have to do some more research and try to look that one over. But that looks pretty good. We can check ring grooves. We can check all the, the other stuff. But at the end of the day, most of the time if the rings butt, that's when you're going to see a failure. Um, that's the, the easiest thing you can do to ensure the life of your part is actually gap the rings correctly. Um, and, you know, I know it's tough as an engine builder to put a motor together, run it, and then take it apart and say, oh, man, what do my rings look like? Most of the time that happens when you inspect the motor after a failure or a rebuild. But you can also, it sounds a little hokey, you can cook your rings on a hot plate and see how much they expand and stick them in a bore. And then I'll give you a rough idea of how much that ring is actually expanding so you can get an idea of what might happen at operating temperature. Another thing we like to check on the inspection side of things is we're going to go through here and we can actually inspect the pin bores. The pin bore is a pretty critical dimension. So we're just, let me just zero this out real fast here, find the bottom. So we're just going to check the pin board to make sure it's close to the size that it came out of here at. So we could go and refer to the spec sheet of the part and say, okay, what was the pin fit to? And if you look at our part right here, the pin fit on this part when it left here is actually 928.3. And you can see here on the our measuring device here, I don't know the technical name for this one. Um, <laughs> you can see it's 928.35. But hey, it's close enough to understand uh, that the pin bore isn't messed up. So there's a lot of different things you can inspect, but it makes it really, really easy. Um, you want to check, obviously we want to make sure and see if the, the top land is wearing. Um, we can see how the shape of the skirt looks. There's a lot of different areas. You can see where it might be expanding a little bit more there. So there's a lot of things that we could do after looking at this part and say, do we need to adjust the cam and the cam shape of the skirt, the barrel shape. Um, but on this particular part right here, we're going to have to ask the customer if he has any data on EGTs or something that might be causing this part to get a little bit soft. So if you guys have any questions on Facebook, be more than happy to answer them. If there's anything that you might think of that you, you want to ask. We got a question about some Suzuki pistons. Um, bring them on in. We'd love to inspect them and look at them and go over them with you and see if we can help you um, figure out what's going on. I mean, the, the, the thing that I think is the most critical to remember when inspecting a part is a lot of times we, as the manufacturer of the piston or connecting rod, we have no idea what condition the engine was run in. And I think maybe some engine builders don't either. You build an engine, you send it out the door, you know, it gets run around the track, the guy could forget to put water in his radiator. Um, he could, uh, you know, jack the back of his car up so all the fuel flows out of the vent tube. And then you go to start your car and you put a little hydraulic in the, in the cylinder. It tweaks the rod a little bit and then all of a sudden it spits out the side of the block. So there's a lot of actual working conditions of an engine that as a parts manufacturer we're not aware of. We just look at the parts and pieces and kind of figure out, hey, what the heck happened? So just a quick recap, always go back to your spec sheet and double check your measurements, the pin bore, the turn diameter, to see if there's any weird stuff going on. You can check your rings to see if they're budding. You can check to see if you're having any micro welding issues. Um, if, you get the, if you get the top ring line really, really hot and your ring starts to lock up to where it doesn't spin, you're going to have some of these problems happen. Um, but I, I just want you to look at this part right here. You can see these pistons take a lot more abuse than people give them credit for. Um, this one is probably melted down to where it's got a really, really, it's a really, really soft part, but it held together. So
So when you get a, a pile of parts like this, you really have to ask yourself, well, what the heck happened to cause this connecting rod to break right at the beam and spit all these parts in the bottom of the oil pan? Um, and this is another example of one that was sent in to us. Um, I don't think there was a pistons parts failure, but um, if I had to guess, I would think that it dropped an intake or an exhaust valve and it was trying to find its way to the bottom of the oil pan as fast as it could. So, once again, we love to inspect your parts. If you're, put, if you're putting your parts through your engine and you have a problem, you have any questions about, you know, the, the condition of your parts after they've been run, we'd be more than happy to, to look at them, give you any um, advice on maybe ring gap or piston the wall clearance, something that can help your part live longer out in service in the race world or even on a street car. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email. Um, you can message us on Facebook. We love hearing from you guys. And thanks for tuning in today to Tech Tuesday and hope you have a great night.